Joe Clark, also known as Fish, lives in Shanghai, China with his wife Jody and four kids. A New Zealand native, Joe's family have made Shanghai home for the past 13 years. Having been locked down since early January, I talked to Joe to find out what life's like as things start coming back to, well, normal. I'm Brett Farrell, and this is The Lock-In. Hey, been a long time. How long have you been in China now? Uh, we've been here 13 years. 13 like years? a long time. Sorry, it just doesn't seem that long ago that you left London. It's it, almost seems like yesterday to me. Uh, it feels like a long time here. <laughs> yeah, no. True. But, but why, why have you stuck there so long, bro? Like, it feels like you should have, like most people, do 10 years somewhere and then give up and go back to the country of origin. <laughs> I thought you'd be back in Kiwiland so far. Uh, yeah, we've tried tried to leave, but um, look, I, our, our kids have grown up here, so you know, for them, this is this is home, wow. and so uh, you know, we've we've kind of stuck it out. And do the kids have any memory of London at all? Uh, Emily has our oldest has has a few memories, but not not, not much. But the others, uh, so Maddie was was born yeah uh, in London, but has no no memory. Uh, we had one. Lulu was born here in Shanghai, and then we had Oscar in New Zealand. Uh, we went back for about five or six months. Yeah. So, what's what's so it like having a baby in China? Like trying to fill in the medical forms and stuff. Well, well, with um, having insurance, it's amazing because uh, you know the private hospitals here is is incredible. It's like having a baby in a hotel. Oh, for real? Basically. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, we loved it. Compared to, say, having a baby in, uh, in the UK, it's, uh, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty amazing. We've, we've done that. We've had that experience. It was, it was a joy. I almost got thrown out of the hospital in the first, first moment. <laughs> I was arguing with a midwife yeah. about the, the length of my wife's labor and how far along she was, and I was told – Pretty much just to sit down. You don't know anything. You're a first-time father. Anyway, 45 minutes later, yes. we had a daughter. So, you know, I might have been onto something <laughs> there. But she did, she, yeah. did, she did often to get me thrown out, which was very kind of her. Um, so what's, tell me what it's like there today, Shanghai. I can see you're in a hoodie, so I'm guessing it's a bit cool. Yeah, uh, ironically, it's, um, it's a bit rainy today. So one thing you learn about Shanghai is there's not that much rain. It gets cold, yeah, but it's not it's not very rainy. So this is actually the first rainy day we've had in maybe two or three weeks. Um, so normally when I'm out here, it's uh, it's bright and sunny and and it's springtime, so it's getting warmer. Yeah, uh, but today's a bit cooler. But what's it? So what's but yeah, it? this is go on. This is our, uh, our our little slice of kind of paradise, I guess, out on this balcony. It so, looks like it's your office, mate. It's probably the only space. The, the yeah, place you can get I'm some pretty quiet. comfortable here. But what's, I've definitely been having a few Zoom calls out here. <laughs> um, mate, I don't know how you. Because I get you're living in an apartment, right? Yep. Yeah, so with we're it, in. Oh wow! With four kids how, in a mid. You're yeah. about mid rise. We're we're low rise. We're we're on the third floor, but we have done the twenty seventh floor in a wow. previous uh, apartment. So, yeah, but they, where we are now. But I bet you've got a bit more nice room. And quiet and good. But you've got a bit more room inside, it, right? Compared to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not 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 that much, but um, oh wow. Okay. I think our apartment is about 160 square meters. So for six people, it's not not a great deal of, of space. <laughs> but uh, but that, what, that's Shanghai for you. <laughs> yeah, and, what, and what's it um, what's it like with having the four kids and both you and Jody in the flat? Like, I, I guess you're not allowed out at the moment, or you are allowed out. What was your lock in like? Um. So. It, it was pretty interesting because 
Uh, it was over Chinese New Year. So about a week before Chinese New Year, um, that's when we heard rumours and uh, that, that we were probably heading into some sort of lockdown. Yep. Um, it seems that the, the government shut the country down pretty quickly. Yeah, I saw, obviously that was amazing. Shanghai, obviously Shanghai being a major hub for uh, the you know, for China, um, it was it was shut down pretty quick, like like Beijing and stuff. So, um, but did you have the same we, level of restrictions that we saw globally that uh, Wuhan was placed under? Um, not not so much. They they did advise people to stay home. Yeah, but I don't think there was, unlike Wuhan, which was restricted quite. Um, uh, quite a lot. We we were more. Um, these are some of the restrictions that are in place. You you can go out of your compound, um, but um, you know you will notice things will change. Uh, you need to wear masks, face masks. Um, and they closed all of the restaurants and cafes and things like that. So, to me, what it was was normally Chinese New Year here is very quiet anyway. Right. So it just seemed like uh, an extreme um, uh, Chinese New Year. Sorry, uh, why do you say so, Chinese New Year was quiet, though? I would have imagined that was like a massive party. Yeah, so a few years ago, uh, they you couldn't have uh, fireworks in Shanghai anymore. Oh. Um, so so it, it became eerily quiet. So, you know, most most people now travel... Uh, for Chinese New Year, whether they travel back home to their, their home province or or now it seems to be popular for for uh, Chinese families to travel overseas. So at Chinese New Year is, is a popular time to do that. Oh, so right. it's normally pretty quiet here anyway. So it just seemed like that. But <laughs> it was um, it was like a scene from a movie. Like you, you go out on the street and there was no one. It, it was extremely quiet. I really find that hard uh, to fathom uh, you, seeing it because you, you see pictures of yeah. China and the busyness of the cities. I, I couldn't imagine it quiet. Yeah, for, for 24, 27, however many million people here, it was eerily quiet, eerily. So, it, um, so, so yeah, so there, there wasn't many people traveling around the city and things like that. But where are you now on a timeline of things? If you you know compare the rest of the world, I mean, New York's pretty bad still. London and Italy still pretty bad. Australia still has some lockdown. New Zealand still locked down. Where are you? Where are you at the moment? Do you think in this whole timeline of events? I, I think we've come out the other side. So this week was the first time that our office was open. Oh wow! So For how long has uh, it been shut? There had been people. So I think this this week is probably the first week um, where things have returned to relative normal. I say relative because, you know, it's, it's there's still an eeriness about everything. Yeah. Everyone's very cautious. Um, so, so we kind of went into some sort of lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think my wife will be able to, correct me but i think it was around the 24th of january gosh 24th of so, january we're now so we're early just, april yeah so um yeah this week has been the first week that i've been back in the office and again even even that is is there's still some restrictions around that how many people we can have uh in in a in a meeting everybody's still wearing masks um, those kind of things. So they're still very cautious. Yeah. And, and what did you do during the time? Like, were you working as normal? Well, as normal? As best um, yeah. So, so my, the company that I work for now, we're essentially a contract manufacturer. We make things for other, other uh, clients overseas. And I look after the Australia and uh, New Zealand markets yep. for us. So obviously, uh, a few weeks ago, they were still working. Um, so we were 
um, I guess from my position, I've just seen sort of, it's been like dominoes, right? So, so obviously what was happening here had it wasn't happening overseas just yet. And then we've seen sort of various markets, the US, yeah. uh, Europe, and then obviously Australia and New Zealand uh, go into to what we experienced in, in from January. So we've been able to sort of anticipate it a little bit and um, make the changes and, and things that, that we need to. Um, yeah, yeah. So but, the, but from your well, pers- I, I've just looking through, but obviously now... From your perspective, Joe, when you sort of sit there, you, you just said you feel like you're coming through the other side of it, though. That's probably a, a great message of hope, I think, in some respects for everybody. But what is it? What, what do you yeah. observe the rest of the world doing right or doing wrong? <laughs> I mean, if you if you if you're further through this than everyone else, what what can you see that perhaps others could learn? Um. Yeah. I, what what so our experience has been. In um, you know, fourth down, like like say Wuhan, yeah. But uh, obviously, uh, there were there were various things to see. Um, you know, outs- outside of delivery people, friends couldn't come into the compound that we lived in. So there were those kind of rooms. Uh, when we would leave, we would need to to we would pick a slip a pass and be able to go out and, you know, we could still go shopping. Uh, we um, could still get what we needed. Um, so those kind of things, I think, uh, the end of, of our sort of lockdown, as it were. Yeah. Uh, out and walk around the city, go to the park, those kind of things. Um, but, uh, you know, they were asking us to observe you know, sort of distancing, uh, not making the people. I think the one saving grace for us was that our local cafe managed to stay open through the whole thing. <laughs> Get so a coffee. We were able to get a coffee every every couple of days. Um, but that 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 saved us, uh, mate. I think so coffee saves everybody. Um, I've seen our so, local cafe still open at the moment too this morning, which is it was a really good yeah. thing to see. But with with just thinking about sanity and and using coffee to stay sane, and um, what, how did the kids stay sane? Did they still have to go to school? Did they? What did they do in the house for all that time? I've got two. They're driving me nuts. Well, well. We we decided this uh, at the end of last year about homeschooling our kids. Oh, so you've been doing that um, anyway? Um, and so we're already kind of yeah, so we're kind of used to that. Uh, you know, look, it has a a, a, a chain. Obviously, um, we decided Jody and I decided kids relatively inside for a bath um so taking them out, out outside the compact etc um so i yeah that did really well they did there's only so many games there's only, there's only so <laughs> many things before there's only so um, many things you can watch on netflix one one thing we we did it exactly you, you, you've cut, you know, to the end of Netflix, and we're like, well, what do we do now? Do we talk to them? What, what do we do? So, yeah, that one thing we was um, we explained everything to them in the world. Um, you know, we still had uh, internet, watch YouTube, and things like that. We were we were honest with what. What we, um, with them, you know, why it was happening, uh, kind of things, and I think that helped them understand. Oh, this is why, you know, we're inside. This we have to wear masks. This is why we hands all the time, as you know, with children to wash their hands is is is, you know, that helped them to understand what everybody was. Yeah. 
<laughs> I think that was um, it's a good thing. Is is letting them in and sort of shielding them. Yeah, it's kind of educating them. Yeah, Joe, I've always found you to be a really optimistic guy. Um, what, how, have you been okay during this time? Have you just generally been you and been optimistic, or have you had some personal challenges as well, just to get yourself through this? Look, I think I think you know it, it just definitely has on just. Um, I would say that China is not an ever. It's never an easy, and even even Chinese view. You know, it's not an easy place. And so I think those days helped prepare me for for these last sort of three months. Mm -hmm. And and so, uh, yeah, I've always been pretty positive and opportunities um, that, that things bring. So I've really enjoyed spending time with my family and lots of things together or in the house uh, you know my my Oscar who's eight now uh, we've been playing the whole thing so we've just finished FIFA uh, so it's probably Get me, get me is uh, being able to do something to you. It is a uh, video game, uh, which my wife will be just with. But uh, <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Hey, Joe, I know it's really early in Shanghai right now, and you're probably desperately in need of a coffee or two. So I'll let you uh, get away so you can get a coffee and spend some more time with the family. But thanks for joining me, mate, and chatting through this. It's been great to hear your voice. I'm Brett Farrell, and this is The Lock-In.